Matt, did you have uh, Corey Davis in Tennessee? I did. What do you What do you think of him? What What makes him so good? Well, first of all, he's a, he's a great person. Um, he cares about not only the game but his teammates. He does everything the right way. Uh, he is a he's a big target. He's he's an imposing guy. Uh, does all the dirty work, blocks, just uh, a true professional. A guy that I got a lot of respect for. Um, got a chance to when we practiced against him last year to reconnect and talk a little bit and uh, just somebody that. I know not only as a football player, but more importantly as a as a man, have a lot of respect for. You saw Zach Wilson basically from the very start with those practices here. I'm not sure how much you studied them those two days, but what have you just thought of what he's done here so far? Well, yeah, and I mean, I'd be lying to you guys if I didn't tell you I watched most of their games every week. So, um, I I just think you've seen you you're starting to see the growth of him. I mean. He still hasn't, I don't even know how many games he's started now, but I think it's less than a, a real regular season. Um, but just the poise that he's showing, uh, you know, everybody could see his, his talent coming out in the draft in terms of his ability to throw the football, a natural thrower, his athleticism, his ability to throw on the move. But I think where you've seen that growth, and I think that's true for a lot of young guys, is just the poise at, you know, that you display in the pocket when things get a little muddy or things aren't going your way. He's obvious. He obviously has responded well to to adversity, and that's I think a mark of a lot of these young quarterbacks is a lot of guys get thrown in there, whether fairly or unfairly, at an early in an early part of the process, and they're going to take their lumps, but. The, it, it's how you respond to that. And I think you're seeing that from him, a guy that's uh, has taken his fair share of lumps, but also has displayed that mental toughness to hang in there and, and be get better as the game goes on and the more he plays. So I think that he's got, he's got a bright future in front of him. He's just got to stay the course. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. I think you, you saw it. That was a great representation of that. Um, and I, I think a lot of guys just get off kilter. As they don't always respond the best when things start going bad. And, uh, you know, I think that he's definitely done that. Matt, so the Jets have a two-to-one advantage with you in terms of knowing each other. They have two guys who know you, <laughs> and you're the one guy who knows those two. So, I mean, knowing what they know of you, do you have to break some tendencies against guys like that? I, I, I think you always, you can overthink that too now, Spoon. So I think you always try to play that game and, um, you know, just you, you try to do what's best for, for your guys and the, the way that you feel like you can put them in the best positions possible um, and have a plan for if, somebody is going to throw a curveball at you, you got to have a plan for that as well. And so, you know, I, I think there's a lot of versatility within our offense, um, within our defense, that we can throw different things at them. And we know that they're going to throw some curveballs at us too because we, we know them well. The one time I got to talk to Mike Leach of the 49ers, he called you the serious one, by the way. Who, my brother? My brother, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd say so. I. Uh, much more mature and <laughs> better looking, right? If you've got a, a player you still believe has got a lot of potential, but you're just not seeing the consistency on game day, I know that you're, you don't hesitate to fix things at practice when it comes to technique, but what's the balance between having your position coach get that fixed and then when it's time for the head coach to step in? Yeah, I think that's it's totally um, dependent on the situation, you know, and Certainly, we play an imperfect game. This is an imperfect game. Mistakes are going to be made. And I think it's a fine line be, be, between overcoaching and a let, letting a guy grow through whatever the process is. Uh, all these guys pick it up at, at a different pace. And um, certainly, you're always going to identify and correct mistakes. But there is also a point where you overcoach at times and can it can be debilitating for guys so 
Um, the, I would tell you this, the, the thing that I would love to see from our team is, again, mistakes are going to happen, but can you just go as fast as you can, do whatever you think is right in the moment, and do it 100 miles an hour? And then if you make a mistake, so what? We'll get it corrected. Um, now, the, the, a caveat to that is you can't make repeatable mistakes. You've got to fix whatever it is and then move on. Today. We'll see when we get out there. Um, you know, we just went through uh, just a little, uh, not walk, well, kind of like a little walk through, and we'll see when we get out there. Matt, your brother said in a press conference about 45 minutes ago that you guys talk every Monday and you give him critique on his Sunday play calling. Mm -hmm. You said that phone call didn't happen this Monday. Was that a game plan or was that just busy? I think we were we were pretty busy just coming back from. Uh, the, the trip and whatnot, but yeah, I would say uh, I'm not going to give them any, any pointers. I think the week that we're we're playing each other either. So, um, but no, he's a guy that you know I, I talk to on a regular basis. I told you guys that yesterday, and um, you know I care about him. I want I want all those guys to do well. I, I, I love him. I love Sala and a lot of the coaches on that staff. What do you think of just with the field goal operation, how that unit has sort of come together? You know, some of the changes you made, you know, Pat getting involved, Jack you know, making the, the long snap. What have you thought of what you've gotten? You know, from yeah, they've done a heck of a job. And, um, you know, you got to you got to give uh, Rich a ton of credit, Byron, um, Spurlock, all those guys, you know, coaching them up. And then the players just taking the change. And certainly we've made some adjustments. I think. You mentioned it. Pat's been a, a big plus there in terms of uh, his steadiness. I think Jack's done a great job snapping the football. Uh, it was really cool to see uh, us in a hurry up field goal situation, you know, last game, and, and just the execution was on point. I think those guys do such a great job of taking what they learned from the classroom and applying it to the game situations. Is also. You know, like like I just mentioned, nothing's ever going to be perfect. There's always things that you're always, you're you're constantly cleaning up. But our players have been coachable, and they've made the necessary adjustments when we do have an issue. Have you gone back to watch the joint practices at all? Maybe not for speed, or maybe you do potentially. Or maybe, like maybe. Okay. Like a receiver going up against a DB, maybe would just to study their styles. Is that what do you think, Bill? What do you think? I probably would. Okay. I don't want to, there you nobody, go. nobody cares what I think. I care. I'm, I like your shirt too. Fire up chips. <laughs> Matt, the um, Jets are pretty strong up front, right? With Lawson and Quinn and Williams. And oh yeah. Is it similar to um, what Saul had with the 49ers? And then, do you see remnants of what they did there, given some of the talent? Is equal good corner? Yeah, it's it's very similar. Just the the way they coach the get off. Um, you know, coming off the football, they're, they're penetrators up front. They've got talent. The one thing that jumps off the tape is they play with relentless effort. And that's always a choice. And I think they do a great job of getting that um, out of their players. I think Aaron White Cotton's done a, a heck of a job there as the D line coach. Uh, Jeff Albrecht is the coordinator in, in Sala and just instilling that philosophy within their that, that unit is evident on tape.